Oi, Nathalie. Oi, tudo bem? Tudo bem, você? Tudo ótimo. Fantástico, <risos> fantástico. Let me just adjust my camera here. Nathalie, before, before we start, I'm just going to just uh, quickly say how this is going to work, what we're going to be talking about. I know it's mistakes, but basically, guys, what we've done, I drew up a list of mistakes that I think my students make very often, and Nathalie did the same. So mm -hmm. we're going to be taking turn, uh, turns commenting on them. And uh, we will then talk a little bit about uh, funny mistakes that people mm -hmm. have made in Portuguese. And uh, you can tell us if you can think of one, you can tell us here, and then at the end, we'll go through them. So Natalie, before we start with the actual mistakes, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, where you're from in Brazil, and what you do? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I'm a language teacher. I teach um, English to Brazilians and I teach Portuguese to people from all over the world. <laughs> I'm originally from Brazil, Recife. So uh, it's in the northeast part of Brazil. Pretty hot and humid <laughs> by the beach. And um, But now I live in Wisconsin in the United States, which is totally the opposite of PCP, like totally. <laughs> yeah. It's very cold. Yeah. Uh, today is minus 10 Celsius. Ooh. Yeah. And actually, it's been a mild winter compared to last year. Last year was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I've been teaching Portuguese um, online for, for two years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for almost three years. So, and I've been teaching English for six years. So I've been teaching English for more time, like more than Portuguese. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, it, you know, so you're from Recife. And yeah. I mean, I, I'm from Porto Alegre. So we have very different accents, I think. Uh, maybe one day we can do a live just in Portuguese so people can hear the different accents. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so would you like to start with your list? Yeah, let's do it. So, um, the very first mistake that I wrote down here, um, it's something that I would say 99% of my students, they make this mistake. Um, whenever they're talking about, like, they're sharing about something they like, instead of saying, eu gosto de pizza, they say, eu gosto pizza. Eu gosto Brasil. Eu gosto aprender português. Yeah. You know? And they often forget the preposition. De, E, yeah. G. Yeah. So, we understand what they're trying to say, but it doesn't sound very natural. It's like something's yeah. missing, you know? So, it's very common. I don't know about your students, but this is really common. Like, no, um, sir. Uh, it's interesting in terms of pronunciation, uh, people, either uh, Spanish native speakers or people who already learned Spanish and then start learning Portuguese, mm -hmm. they tend to pronounce it as de. Uh, so, de, uh, gosto de. Okay. Gustar. Gustar. Too. Oh, gustar. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I've heard too, like, gustar. Eu yeah. go, no. That's so, go, gosto, gosto. That's right. <laughs> But also, I think in you know in terms of uh, the pronunciation of G, again, I think that's the standard pronunciation. But then sometimes people say, "Oh no, but I heard a Brazilian saying there once," uh, and I said, "Yes, it, it you know regional accents it will vary." But again, then again, we have to teach the standard way of pronouncing words, which which yeah. will be G. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the standard. Like in. In Recife, I would say most people will say D, but that's our accent, you know? I would say most, yeah, most states in Brazil will pronounce G. Yeah. In, in Rio Grande do Sul, the state where I'm from as well, the, especially the countryside, some people will pronounce it as D, so it's a harder D sound. And, and then T as well, instead of chi, they would say T. Ah, yes, like yeah. boa tarde. <laughs> boa tarde, uh, noite, noite. Instead of noichi. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, excellent. So that was gostar G. Always follows with the, the verb gostar, always follows with the preposition G. Yes. 
Yes, uh, and tell them they're a couple. They're not, never like divorced. Yeah. They're always yeah. together. <laughs> that's a good tip. Yeah, that's a good way of remembering it. Yeah. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Um, right. So the first one on my list is when people talk about a specific date. So for example, if you want to say my birthday is on the, I don't know, 2nd of July. Yeah, people will tend to forget that we, in Portuguese, we always use the word dia before the actual number, before the mm -hmm. date. So people might say, meu aniversário é 2 de julho, for example. That's mm -hmm. not my birthday. My birthday is on the 25th of December. So oh, meu so, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Really? Natal. Christmas yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I would say meu aniversário é no dia 25 de dezembro. Mm -hmm. So people tend to forget. So que dia é hoje? Hoje é dia 6 de fevereiro. Hoje é dia 6 de fevereiro. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. still in terms of dates, I think some people, because in English it's all the ordinal numbers, first, second, third, in Portuguese, the only date that is an ordinal number is the first. So we say primeiro. Yes. And then all the other ones are the cardinal numbers. So we would say something. So 25th, I would actually say literally translating would be 25 of December. 25 yes. de dezembro. Mm -hmm. so, Meu aniversário é no dia 8 de abril. 8 de abril. <laughs> Muito <Oi>. bem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, muito bem. So that's uh, so that was my. That's your turn now. What's next on your list? All right. Um, something else that a lot of my students uh, say. Um, so whenever they wanna talk about like possession, or they're talking about something that belongs to them, or talking about their family too. Um, so we'll say mine instead of using you know the possessive um, pronoun like. Sua mãe, sua mãe, you know. So a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of, many times students they know my, uh, my husband is American, and then they ask, você marido americano, você marido. So yeah. instead of say, seu, seu marido. Strange because yeah. you know, in English we've got the possessive pronouns as well. Exactly. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's funny because most of the mistakes, it has to do with your native language. Mm. But in this case, it's funny. Maybe, I, I feel like they know, they, they've learned it, but when it's time to speak, they end up saying, mm. você, or, yeah, yeah or, me, uh, eu, eu, mãe, uh, brasileira, you know? Sim, sim. Yeah. We, so, instead of using the, the, the possessive pronoun, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. There is another comment here, Mike Cochinha. <laughs> yeah, that's your name, right? <laughs> his, his Portuguese is very very good, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. He says in Portugal, it's common to describe spicy food as pica. I hear my aunt say it all the time. I said this to a Brazilian in my first <laughs> few months of learning it, and it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mm -mm. since I think pica in Brazil means something sexual. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with pica as well, uh, one of uh, my students, one of the members of the uh, FWP Academy, I'm not going to name names, but if she's watching this, you'll probably have a laugh. Because <laughs> uh, she told me the other day that she has a hamster called pica. And I was oh. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay, let's carry on. So I'm not sure who, which, whose turn is it. Is it your turn? My turn. You did uh, the possessive pronouns. My turn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. So the next on my list is, so in English we have for, we use the verb to have as to eat or to drink. So it's common for English speakers, when they want to say, for example, I'm going to drink water, to use the translation of the verb to have, which is ter in Portuguese. So they would say something like, uh, eu vou ter água. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, so, that's common. It's it's quite a common one, I think. Yeah, and it's um. So you can either you have the choice of verbs. You can say "eu vou beber," or you can say "eu vou tomar," mm -hmm. which is very for drinks, and obviously to eat "eu vou comer." Yes, but exactly. um. And who once he said, uh, I asked him like, "What are you gonna eat for dinner?" And he's like, "Eu vou ter pizza." Eu vou ter vou pizza. Ter. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna have pizza. Ah, eu vou comer pizza. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, that actually, um, yeah, it has to do with the next thing on my list. Because um, a lot of students, so I'll just go ahead and share <laughs> one more uh, yeah. common mistake. A lot of my students, they get confused with, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, with poder mm -hmm. and conseguir. Right, poder de conseguir, so, yeah. Yes, so one of my students, he was at a nightclub, and, like, this girl asked him if he wanted to dance. He's like, oh, yeah, but, you know, I can't dance. So he said, eu não posso dançar. And she was like, what's wrong with you? Like, you cannot dance? Like, you're not allowed to dance? What? You know? And he was like, no, I mean, I can't dance. I'm I'm not good at it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and I told him, oh, you should have said, eu não, eu não consigo dançar bem, or... And não, não dança muito bem. Yeah. But every time you're talking about something that you cannot do because you don't have the ability or you're not good at it, you don't use eu não posso. Or you can use the verb saber as well. Não saber. Sei yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Não sei dançar. Yeah, yeah, that's another option too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so right. it was very funny because he was just surprised at her reaction. Like, why why was she like so, um, you know, like, <laughs> Worried and like you're not allowed to dance, and I'm like, yeah. she just said, "Eu não posso dançar." Like, yeah. You can't. yeah. So because this verb for there, I mean, one way, one way you can use it is like what you say now to be allowed to do something. Uh, but I think we also use it when we are requesting things. Uh, so você pode uh, trazer a conta, por favor? Mm -hmm. Can you bring the bill? So yes. uh, when we are requesting something, someone can do something for us. Um, muito bem. So the next one on my list is actually uh, Portuguese grammar in use. It's uh, oh. made a comment here saying, one mistake my beginner students make uh, is pronouncing the letter M in English. They close their lips like them or I am. And they them. close their lips when they speak bom and com. So this is exactly what I was going to say, actually. It's on my list. Uh, so yes, so pronouncing the M at the end of words when it's preceded by a vowel. So mm -hmm. that, that M is just there to make that vowel before nasalized. So the word for well, which is bem, like we say to the bem, mm -hmm. or well, very common, like he said, uh, for people to say to the BEM. To the BEM. Because it's, yeah. I think, they see the M and then they automatically go with the M sound. Mm -hmm. So, but that the M is just making the uh, E, the vowel E before, nasalized, so bang. So yes, don't, bang. the tip that I always say to my students is try not to close your lips. Of course, you will mm -hmm. have to eventually, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, especially <laughs> in the middle of a sentence, you have to to say the next word. But to finish that word, leave it a little gap, yeah. bang, and then exactly. it goes your lips. Yeah, I tell so them it, to smile sometimes, like, say, yeah. to the bang, and then you smile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, to the bang. <laughs> that's what I tell them. They're like, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good tip, bang. And then you've got one like, sing, mm -hmm. sing, so sim. Sim. Uh, Sim, yeah. And then people say bom for good instead of bom, so it's bom, very nasal. So yes, that's uh, so that was my uh, that was uh, the next one on my list. So your yeah, turn now. Yes. Um, okay, so another one that I wrote down here is um, especially Spanish uh, Spanish speakers they, you know, tend to use some words that have in Spanish that are similar to Brazilian words, to, you know, Portuguese words, but they have a different meaning. So 
um, I have a story of a, of somebody who came to Brazil and then they ate like I can't, I don't remember what exactly uh, she ate, but it was like a very good food and very rich, like very you know so much like, like so much flavor. She was like, oh, it's esquisito, and then people were like, what? Like esquisito? What do you mean? Like, didn't you like it? <laughs> yeah, esquisito, esquisito. <laughs> But she wanted to say, you know, oh, it's ah, deliciosa, comida muito boa, requintada, you know? Sofisticada. Sim. Yeah, sofisticada. Yeah, exactly. Sofisticada, you know, and esquisita. So the next one on my list is actually to do with Spanish as well, because uh, a very common mistake that my students make is to say for bigger, which is to say something's bigger than something else, so the comparative, they would say mas gran, or mais grande, mm -hmm. or, or, or mais pequeno, instead of using uh, for bigger, maior, mm -hmm. and then for uh, smaller, menor. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a very common mistake, mais, gran, mais grande, uh, yeah. or, or mais pequeno, because yes. of the Spanish influence. Yeah. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, I tell my students, you know, sometimes you know, kids when they're learning Portuguese, they say that. So yeah. you're gonna sound like a kid if you say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mais you know? <laughs> Mais Mais pequeno. Pequeno. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's it's it's very funny. It's cute. But <laughs> my my husband, uh, he's American, but he grew up speaking spanish and english so every time he he's speaking portuguese with me you know sometimes i try to speak portuguese he always says oh it's my mais grande mais yeah. Pequeno. Yeah, pequeno. Mais <laughs> yeah yeah uh, muito bem. what's uh what's the next one on your list uh my next one so right now um i'm gonna talk about word stress mm -hmm. so sometimes um students they have a hard time uh, telling like which syllable is stressed um and one of my students he he went to Cabo Verde not sure how to say that in English I don't know Cabo Verde Cape, <laughs> uh, yeah Cape I think it's Verde. called Cape Verde yeah <laughs> yeah I'm not sure and he wanted to order coconut water and he said uh por favor agua Agua de coco. <laughs> and then he said, and then he, he was so frustrated. Like, we were having a class, like, he was in Cabo Verde, but we were still having classes, you know, uh, and online. And he said, so the other day I went to order something, and then everybody was laughing at me, like, kind of, like, trying not to laugh, but they were laughing. I don't know what I said wrong. And I was like, what did you, what'd you say? And he said, oh, agua de coco. And I'm like, oh. You mean coco, <laughs> agua de coco. Yeah. So he was like, I can't believe I said that. I'm like, it's okay. It's part of life. Uh, oh, you were frozen again. Sorry, it's back. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think they, no, I can hear you now. Yeah, it was a bit choppy. Uh, but yeah. now it seems okay. Yeah. yeah. So what else? I think, I've, have you got anything else on your list? Um, I just realized that I skipped one. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, we still have time. Yeah, uh, which is uh, a lot of a lot of my students they they get confused with um, conhecer, uh, saber. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying like um, eu conheço você, like I know you, eu mm -hmm. sei você. Yeah, I think, I guess, you know, saber is more when you're expressing the knowledge uh, or the lack of knowledge about mm -hmm. a fact. Yeah. You know? um, and also, um, we were talking about a learned skill. We talk, I think we did some examples, like, eu não sei, eu não sei nadar. Uh -huh. So I don't have that skill. Yeah. And then the verb conhecer, it's normally used to express whether you are, you are familiar with someone or a place or a thing. So, você conhece o Marcelo? Uh-huh. 
Right. So it's like, yeah. are you familiar with him? Do you know who he is? Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, Thinking about familiar helps, right? Because then no could be coincidence, a bit. Yeah. Are you familiar with him? So. And um, in relation to places, it's used a lot as well because when we say "Você conhece o Brasil?" Yeah. Okay. As mm -hmm. in, have you been there or have you visited mm -hmm. it? So in terms of place, it's got that connotation of, yeah, I know, I know Brazil, but that's not yeah, what I want to know. If I say conhece, but say conhece, as in, have you been there? Mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah. Exatamente. Você conhece, like, yeah, have you been there? Yeah. And yeah, and for, for that reason, a lot of my Brazilian students learning English, they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, I know the United States. Right. Like, yeah. So you're like, okay, you know it exists? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but have you been? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been there? Okay, I, I've, I've been to the United States. I've visited the United States. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the last one on my list um, is the, uh, the, again, you know, Spanish, uh, the, the pronouncing the S when it comes in a word between two vowels. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> like the word for house, which is casa. Very common for people to pronounce it as casa, so a strong S sound. But mm -hmm. in fact, and I think that's the tip that I always give my students, whenever you see the S between two vowels, that S is going to have the sound of Z or Z in American Z. English. <laughs> yeah. uh, so be casa, z, casa. Uh, peso, the word for weight, peso. Not peso, but peso. peso. Uh, another one here, the verb bizarre, to step on something. Yeah. So that S is between the two vowels, it's going to have a Z sound. Bizarre. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very good one. Brazil is a Z sound. And also, the L at the end is an U sound. Yeah. Brazil, yeah. no Brazil. <laughs> si. <laughs> Exactamente. Uh, exactly. Uh, so I think we've done our list and I think now what we can do is talk about, we've got a bit of time, we can go through uh, some funny mistakes. I've, I've, I've uh, asked people to tell me their mistakes or funny mistakes that they did. And just to mention a few here, uh, someone said that, I mean, this is a classic one. It happens to all students who are learning Brazilian Portuguese, is to say pau instead of pão. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like pau de queijo <laughs> instead of pão de queijo. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, very subtle the difference, pau and bone. Mm -hmm. So that's the own sound which can be a bit oh. of yeah. And um someone said that she wanted to say she was tired and she said estou casada. Oh okay. Uh, <laughs> so sad. casada a casada means married. So what she wanted to say was cansada. Cansada. That's mm -hmm. the adjective for tired. Estou cansado or estou cansada. Uh -huh. And then another one uh, said that she wanted to compliment someone on their ponytail. So ponytail in Brazil, it literally translates as horse tail. Yeah. Rabo de cavalo. Rabo de cavalo. Yeah. Or, or tail of horse, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she, instead of saying... Eu gosto do seu rabo de cavalo. I like your ponytail. She said, Eu gosto do rabo do seu cavalo. <laughs> Good thing she didn't say, Eu gosto do seu rabo. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been worse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But yeah, if she hadn't said horse, it would be, I like your tail, which means yeah. mom in Brazil. Uh, so that was oh. another funny word. I had... Yeah, no, so these are the things, these are the, the ones that they've uh, they've told me. That, um, but I think also before we, we, we finish, uh, Natalie, and just have a quick look here, see if there's any other questions or anything. I don't think so. But um, we can also talk about our mistakes in English or funny mistakes. Um, so do you have any funny stories? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm trying to think <laughs> which ones I should share. <laughs> but when I first came to the U.S., uh, I was just visiting uh, for a few weeks. And... I I didn't know like this 
you know, the word mashed, like mashed potatoes. Yeah. So um, we were at a restaurant and then um, I wanted to order some and I said, do you have smashed potatoes? Smashed. And everybody was like, smashed? I don't know why. Like, I just, I heard smashed. I thought it yeah. was, because I knew the word smashed for some reason, maybe from a game or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, my husband, who was my boyfriend at that time, he was like, me mashed? He <laughs> usually doesn't correct me. He doesn't like correcting me, but he, you know, he thought it was really funny. And he said, yeah. smashed, that's smashed. Because smashed is like you're yeah. smashing everything, you yeah. know, aggressively. Yeah. And his dad was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. that's how to cook. <laughs> and uh, in Portuguese, mashed potatoes, pire, de batata. Yeah, in Recife we say puré. Puré ou pire, yes. You say puré, <laughs> I say pire. Pire. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because it, it comes from French, like yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah. this sound, so it's either e or u, not u. <laughs> it's like a buffet or buffet. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Some yeah, and here I, 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 I actually say buffet. buffet. I say buffet. Some people say buffet. Yeah, I say buffet too. Yeah. In the US, you say buffet. I don't know how mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, buffet. Buffet. Yeah. buffet. yeah. But in Brazil, some people even say buffet. Buffet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, I mean a similar one for me. It's something that I always uh, have to think about when I want to say kitchen. I have to try hard not to say chicken. <laughs> oh, it's in the chicken. <laughs> it's in the yeah. <laughs> Where's the spoon? Oh, it's in the it's in the chicken. It's in chicken. the chicken. The chicken ate it. Yeah. Kind of like napkin and kidnap. Like I once, I almost said, you know, could you give me or can you pass me the the kid the kidnap? But I, I remember it at the time, so it's like the, the napkin. It's napkin, not kidnap. <laughs> so that's yeah. a funny one. And and again, I think it's just to illustrate that we all may. I'm probably in this life. We've made mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. speaking English and it's to show people sometimes they think that oh I'm always I'm only going to practice or to try and speak to a Brazilian once I know that I'm not going to make mistakes mm -hmm. that's not going to happen that's not going to happen <laughs> thank you so much for everyone who's watched the the live and thank you Natalie it's been really uh it's really a really good uh, so opportunity uh, it's been fun, and uh, yeah, we should definitely do it again. Maybe next time we yeah. do it uh, uh, in Portuguese so that people can hear our accents. Uh, next time you should be my guest. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. We'll, we'll get our diaries and put a date on. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Fantástico. Muito obrigado, Natalie. Tchau, tchau. Tchau, Fernando. Obrigada. Obrigado. Tchau, tchau.